When I say that space is fake, people all over the globe are up in arms and they want to kill me for saying that. In actual fact, I am making a correct statement. Space really is fake. Whether you want to believe it or not. People all over the globe find it incomprehensible that governments of the world would get together and conspire to deceive the human population. 99.99% .99 of the human population do not know what is really going on in this world. They get up in the morning, um, Joe Blocks on the street, get up in the morning, go to work, return home in the evening, watch television, then go to bed and repeat the same pattern for at least another four days. And they're so happy in this, uh, in this world, just following the same regime, the same routine. To put into context what I'm saying, we have to go back to the beginning of the 20th century when the Wright brothers invented the aeroplane. And when they start started to fly at altitude and over long distances, they began to find anomalies. For example, if the Earth has a circumference of 24,901 miles and a radius of 3,959 miles, you would notice a curve or even a, a drop in the elevation of the physical nature of the, uh, the Earth, the ground. And they did not see that. They were flying level at, say, 20 to 30,000 feet in the air. They found that the ground beneath them followed the aeroplane perfectly level. And of course, the idiots who believe in the spinning basketball in the vacuum of space say that the, the, the aeroplane was following the curvature of the Earth utter, utter rubbish. In the early 1930s, when Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party came to power in Germany, they've sent expeditions all over the world, and particularly to Antarctica, where they set up a base and called it New Schwabenland. Now, the the Germans, uh, the Nazis rather, believed that they descended from a group of people called the Aryans. And these people lived in Middle Asia. And of course, they believed the Earth was flat. The Nazis found further proof at the height of uh, World War II when they sent V2 rockets to London. And they found out that these rockets travelled great distances without using any ball earth mathematics. Whatever you may think of uh, Admiral Richard E. Byrd, the fact of the matter is that the United States Navy did send him to the Arctic and the Antarctic on expeditions military expeditions to explore those two continents. And he claimed to have found anomalies at uh, either end. And what he found was the physical edge of the Earth. As a direct result of these findings, they set up the International Geophysical Year 1957 to 1958. Scientists from all over the globe participated in this venture. What they found set up a chain of events that resulted in the 
creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty. Also, don't forget, uh, just after the World War II, they created the United Nations, the controllers of the New World Order or the One World Government. And everything, every world legislation has to go through the United Nations. Well, what about the Russians, I hear you ask? What about them? Well, they were in on it as well. The leader of the International Geophysical Year, Professor Van Allen. Yes, he of the Van Allen belts had already invited the Russians to join the scientific endeavor and he invited them in 1954. Don't forget the Russians were the first to fake space with the ridiculous metal ball with antennas called Sputnik 1. Then they had the audacity to claim that they put the first human in space, Yuri Gagarin. Then in July 1969, the United States government and its executive office of NASA committed the most fraudulent event in human history. They claimed that they had set, sent three men to the moon, where two of those men descended to the lunar surface, walked around a bit, took some photographs, then blasted off from there and back to Earth. Yeah, right. Cool story, bro. What about all the people who work for NASA? Are they all lying? No, not really. Those technicians who you see on the picture, they go to work, they're given specifications to build a contraption, like the one you see on the picture, and they just do their job. They build that thing and they think that will go into space. And don't forget, you know, uh, they don't know what their managers know and the managers don't know what the director knows because it's all compartmentalized. You know, they, they do their job, go home and, you know, get paid real good wages for it. And it doesn't take millions of people to, uh, to fake space or to keep the lie going. All you need, all you need are a handful of people right at the top. All military organizations follow a need to know ba uh, st basis structure. They only know what they've been told. And yes, they go to elaborate lengths to keep this lie going. And it is hard to believe and to Joe blokes on the street, this is incomprehensible that governments could lie to their people. But the cool, cold truth of the matter is that these governments and agencies fake space. And they will keep on doing this until the day they come clean and announce to the world that the earth is in fact flat and stationary.